You might want to pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. We have some charged plates. We may assume the upper plate is positive and the lower plate is negative. And there's also these two different materials between the plates. These are called dielectrics. And we're going to need to incorporate the dielectrics into our analysis. We've written Gauss's law, which you've learned in a previous chapter, but this time we're including a dielectric constant to account for the effect that these materials have on the situation here. Now, between the plates are going to be two different electric fields. They're different because the dielectric constants are different. We can label this electric field E sub 2, and then this other electric field is going to be E sub 1, and we're going to develop expressions for those two electric fields. Now, if we look at this picture here, we know that the electric fields are going to be constant in magnitude. You probably have learned earlier that when you have a parallel plate capacitor, the electric field has a constant magnitude between the plates. So because it's a constant magnitude, we can take the electric field magnitude as well as the dielectric constant and factor them to the outside of the integral. We would then be left with the integral of dA, which basically is the area of each plate here. So we can replace the integral of dA with the overall area of the plate. And what we want to do is solve for the electric field magnitude. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by epsilon kappa area, which now gives us the following expression for each electric field. So for electric field two, we'll end up putting a subscript two on the electric field as well as kappa, and then same thing with electric field one, we'll use subscripts of one. But before we do that, we need to understand another former concept that you probably picked up in chapter 24, and that is the relationship between the electric potential difference between the two plates and the electric field between the two plates. So this is a relationship, again, that you probably have learned in an earlier chapter. Now we have two different electric fields, so we have to be a little bit careful here. So what we're gonna do is actually do the electric potential difference equals the E sub one, D sub one, plus E sub two, D sub two. We have to do that because we have two different electric field magnitudes. Now when it comes to D sub one, that would be the distance represented by this layer of the dielectric. So that layer has a distance of D divided by two. And then for D sub two, it's the same idea. That layer has a distance of D divided by two as well. So for both D sub one and D sub two, we're gonna fill in D divided by two. And then again, for the E sub one and the E sub two, those electric field magnitudes, we're gonna be using this expression with a subscript of either one or two on the kappa value. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. Now, this is all well and good, but how does this relate to the capacitance? We're trying to find the capacitance of this capacitor, and you probably have learned in this chapter that the charge stored on each plate, or the magnitude of charge stored on each plate, is equal to the capacitance times the potential difference between the plates. But the potential difference between the two plates is given by this wonderful expression right here. So for this V term, we're going to be substituting in this expression for the electric potential difference that we've been developing. And there we have it. And now it's just going to be a matter of solving for the capacitance C, not a small task, of course. If we look at the bracketed terms, we have some commonalities here. We have Q in both of the terms. We have this D divided by two in both of the terms. We have epsilon naught and area in both of the terms. So a lot of commonalities there. We can factor them out as a greatest common factor. So we've factored out those common terms. We're trying to isolate the capacitance. Perhaps next we can multiply both sides by two epsilon naught area over QD. And we'll see why that works in just a moment. And it will work because that's going to cancel out the QDs here and then the two epsilon areas right there. On the left-hand side, if you look carefully, the Qs are going to cancel. That's nice because we were not given the magnitude of charge on each plate. So let's rewrite the left and right-hand sides. And then finally, let's divide both sides by that bracketed term, which will cancel it out on the right-hand side. And that is our rather ghastly final expression for the capacitance. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in the known values. It may help when punching it into the calculator to recognize that this D can actually be shifted to the denominator. That might just help out in the inputting into the calculator. So maybe we could write it like that. We'll plug in the known values and also their conversion to standard units, which we'll show you in just a moment. 
So the conversions are emphasized in pink here. For example, the area was given as 7.89, but that was in centimeters squared. So you have to multiply that by 10 to the minus four to get it into meters squared. And then the D was given in millimeters. So we multiplied that by 10 to the minus three in order to get it into the standard unit of meters. So if you carefully input that into your calculator, you should end up with approximately 1.73 times 10 to the negative 11 and the standard unit of capacitance is the farad. So this indeed is the final answer to the question.